Welcome to the Mike on Much podcast. I'm your host, Mike Veerman. I'm here with my friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman, as well as our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham. Today on the show, we have K. Trevor Wilson. You know him from Letterkenny, and of course, he is a very good and successful stand-up comedian who's appeared on Jimmy Kimmel and all sorts of stuff. We're going to get to him in a bit because this is a big episode, guys. Lots going on. This is the much talked about, controversial and otherwise, <laughs> episode where Shane's massive uh, and amazing, where Shane... <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. I have been gaining weight. I'm like, I'm like a carnival barker. Uh, this is uh, the intern contest, yeah. Shane. Shane's digital dessert intern contest, if you're looking for the official title. That is the official title. So that They're is... pulling up in the parking lot like in a minute, right? They are. In fact, I actually need you to sign something, Max, because <laughs> as you know, we promised... A signed picture. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I wearing that hat again? I have no idea. Mike, if you could describe this so photo. For our listeners, Shane literally has a very nice plaque here, and it is a black and white photo of Max Kerbin in a top hat. Well, what is this from? like a black I'm suit trying to jacket. remember. What, what is this from? Did again? you get this done at like Niagara Falls I when you I pose in an old timey thing? Photo session, but no. I tried to Google the funniest picture of you I could find. And I, originally it was going to be kind of a bad picture. You should literally be like holding a six shooter here. You yeah. know, like those weird photos. It was some session. I forget what this would have been. But like, there's just this old timey black and white photo of you wearing a top hat <laughs> and like trying to look cool. And it's uh, it's recent photo too. It's like not for, it's from not that long ago. Mm-hmm. So for our listeners, this is is this the grand prize? Or I guess the grand prize is the internship. Yeah, this is just we promised a signed picture of Max. Yeah. I think this is a bit of a uh, a nice contest to walk away with a plaque. Yeah, it's a good picture. <laughs> And so, yeah, there, there you have it. Okay, we're going to post this photo. because This is. will go up uh, for our listeners. Because I am filming this, too. And this is, for Erica, the intern, this is going to be a big test for her because she's going to edit the game show together. Ooh. And we're going to put that on YouTube. We'll see how her editing skills are. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So lots going on. We will get to that game show in the dessert since it is Shane's digital dessert intern. Uh, really exciting times. Everybody stick around for that. I guess we'll talk about who the four contestants are and how everything's going to work once we get to, to the dessert. We can do that sure okay other than that lots has been going on fellas what's been going on in your lives it's been busy for me actually i feel like i haven't seen you very I, much I know. you announced your new record rally cry yeah i was actually with manager ash a minute ago i was like what am i going to talk about on the pod today she's like what, yeah, what's happening lady and then we looked over at this like um at one of the mocks of that album vinyl that we're going to be making <laughs> we're like oh yeah that thing the thing we talk about like 23 hours a day <laughs> that is happening in our it's lives. a picture of you right on the album. yeah with the top hat yeah <laughs> with the top hat i didn't do the album art for the record i didn't even suggest that idea did um, you mean for the record or yeah for the i was record? wondering for the re- oh, both um <laughs> And Mike D uh, loved the image, and he does most of our artwork. And the guy seemed to like it. It's just my head is cut off on the cover, so it doesn't. It's not so obviously me, or is it obviously me? It's pretty obviously you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It feels more uh, artistic than narcissistic. Sure. Yeah. yeah it's not just like a, a profile picture, basically. It's no, not, it's not that. But uh, so it's been really fun. You know, we've had the title "Rally Cry" up our sleeves. Probably since January. When you wore the coat, you knew what you were doing. Yeah, exactly. We've been seeding it in there, and uh, it's been fun. So we're just kind of getting going with the, with the big album launch. Are Shane and I allowed to tell people that we've heard the record in its entirety? Sure, yeah. Well, I guess you just did. Yeah. Pretty great stuff. We heard right? it in its entirety. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, man. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited for, for, for the people to hear it, for our Kells fans, for the rest of the world. I, man, it's like there's some great fucking tunes on Is there. this your best album ever, I, or can I think you so. not tell? I mean, it's hard to say. We always think that like the most recent thing we did is like, oh, this is our best thing, but it feels really awesome. Like, and I'll talk about the record once more songs are out and people know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it putting it out there and, and digging in. Because it's like the whole process of putting out music is exciting. Like announcing the album and the cover art this week was like just, an, it was like kind of like the, the night before Christmas kind of thing where it's like you didn't get to see the way people react. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll be putting out another song and then there'll be a few other teaser tracks before the record drops uh, October 19th. And then there'll be a, a tour announcement. There's just all the fun stuff about rolling out what we do, uh, I take a lot of pleasure in. I was gonna say, do you still get like the dopamine hit? Like, oh, do, totally. It doesn't get old, even though was this five now? Uh, yeah, number five, fifth yeah. record. So yeah. it's like you still get excited to like post the artwork and do all that stuff and oh, see yeah. people react. Yo, totally. And and Manager Ash kind of lives for the same thing, and uh, it's and we always try to kind of outdo ourselves from whatever the last thing was. So we're like we kind of brainstorm like 
all the time. And it's fun. It's a kind of like use a lot of creativity, obviously, when it comes to making the music and writing the lyrics and being in the studio and picking the sounds and the mixes and all that stuff. And now we're on kind of the phase two of creativity, which is kind of uh, marketing and kind of framing how the album should be presented. And that's really exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we'll talk about that in episodes to come. We'll do a full uh, album breakdown podcast. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, no, we'll. I'll definitely take advantage of this medium just to talk about myself a little bit more. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I actually recently I wanted to talk about this. I went to uh, the Rogers Cup tennis match. Was it hot as hell? No, it was nice, man. So I was lucky enough to get an email unsolicited from this wonderful woman named Alina who asked if I would like to attend a match at the Rogers Cup. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but my wife Danica is a massive, massive tennis fan. Like, it, that is always on in our place if there's some tournament going on, a major or otherwise. Does she play? No. Oh, she just is into it. She's just into it. She likes the sport. But uh-huh. well, who's this Alina person? I don't know. Just a random girl messages you with? A publicist. Maybe it's the juice of the pod. I don't know. Wow, I didn't get a message. <laughs> <laughs> you knew exactly that's where Shane's brain went. It's like, wait a second. Uh, so we, so we're not going to tell him that I was also on that email. I was going to leave that part. Uh, were you? <laughs> oh, I didn't want to kill the man. You were on it. You were. I was. Ah, yeah. Actually, you guys got to tell them. Speaking of that, I was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, are you going to do this, Max? It's like maybe like a double date. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, uh, Lauren's in Europe. And I go, okay, cool. He's like, but we should get Jeannie Bouchard for the, the podcast. I go, Max, it's the men's tournament in Toronto. The women are in Montreal. He goes, oh, then I definitely don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but wait, wait, wait. So when you ask Max and he says, no, I can't come, like go on a doubles thing. Could was it non-transferable? Like it was non-transferable. People? Yeah, I think it was, that literally was in bold. <laughs> no, I said we've been in the situation before where it's like, okay, there's only two tickets available. Uh, the, you know, the, it should be one of two of the three of us is the first option. But then, do you go? Do you take it to your girlfriend slash wife, or do you? What do you do? So. Uh, this one, I, I, I'm here's the truth because I'm assuming it came through the pod. I probably should have asked you to be my plus one. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, Shane. Yeah. But because it meant so much to Danica, I was like, this one I'm going to take. But and also, myself. you wouldn't have said, yeah, I'm dying to go on a date with you, Mike, to watch tennis. Well, this gets to the point of courtesy. No. Right? God. No, but it kind of feels nice to be asked to go to the party. Case in point, Mike, what did you text before this podcast? The group text I was involved in. Oh, I said I, I sent a text to Max, Shane, uh, Dan Hamilton, and the nut, and I said, "Does anyone want to get a drink after the pod? Because we're doing this big game show thing. I thought it might be nice to go what for a I pint say? after. Nothing. No, I said yes. Oh, I didn't get oh, that yeah, text yet. Yes. I said yeah, actually. Well, here's a question though, Shane. <laughs> Given the context of this particular situation, yeah. you would have immediately said, "No, Danica wants to go." Of he, course. Yeah, but so do you but really I would have need thought, the, the the pleasantry of? Uh, like, yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I know. See, this is where we differ. But sure. That's no, but it might be a character flaw. But if I, I know, I know Mike is kind of the same way. Like if if I got offered something and if I didn't, if I was just like, oh, I'm taking Alex because I know she prefer. You might be like, hey, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have wanted to go to that, but maybe I would want to see the Taylor Swift concert or Miley Cyrus or whatever it is. Maybe. I don't know. I also didn't know exactly why we got this offer. Sure. And I didn't want it to go away. But yes, I guess I, I guess the thing was it came through to, to myself and Max and she asked, do you guys want these? They're non-transferable. And I was like, I would love one with a plus one. Yeah, but you, I know you understand my ideology. I feel like we're kindred spirits that way. Yeah, I guess I you get know, that. I, yeah, I get it. I think for me... Well, here's the thing. Here's, here's what I would say to that. I wouldn't ask you that hope like expecting to say no if i'm offering it to you it's because i'm going mm-hmm. like i'm offering it to you and then it's like like it'd, it'd be like the thing where it's like i'm bringing danica like i can't i'm not going to give the spot to you over danica so i'd almost feel bad just even offering it to you because what if you go yeah and then i have to go actually here's the but deal but you asked max first no i didn't he got oh, i was on the email oh i see. i didn't ask max yeah, mike and i were on the email together hmm. okay okay yeah yeah i'm not mad i'm not mad he was trying to get to the, the bottom of no, the truth i will get even though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway hey, get back to your Danica sorry. loves tennis uh it ended up being the experience of a lifetime i now feel bad telling this story <laughs> yeah, no. uh, there, it, so anyway we ended we picked this date and you don't know who's gonna be playing on the date you pick that's the nature of tennis it's a tournament two like sort of no-name guys could make it through the night you're going so we go on a friday night turns out it's Rafael Nadal, Ugh. who literally my wife is in love with. I think yeah. I'm using literally there properly yeah. because she watches all of his matches. She gets like so excited about that's him. That's karma. The way that I yeah. love basketball, you know, in the Raptors, that's how she feels about Nadal. And you're in tennis. the name of your cat. 
our cat is named Rafa, our second cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how big of a deal this is to her. So we get there. It's like we go to this thing um, called the Chairman's Lounge. And it is as like fancy, and this is how fancy the chairman's lounge is. The final on Sunday, I was watching on TV, and they swung over to like the area that, like, literally two seats over from where Danica and I were sitting. Guess who was there? Who? Sid Crosby, just hanging wow. out watching tennis on Sunday. Damn. Anyway, it's like really kind of like fancy pants, and Danica kind of, you know, we're faking it. Like, we were fake it till you make it because we don't normally get to be amongst sure. these sort of like people who I imagine have money. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sure there's other media people there or whatever. So, we get to our seats. Uh, it's all open bar, free food or whatever. We're hanging out. And uh, there's a match before the Nadal match. And then finally when Nadal comes out, and I started running this bit, like I was posting on my Instagram, basically about like how sexy my wife thought Nadal was. Yeah. And so like then I was just kind of had a running feud with Nadal, even though it's like it's no competition. He's super in shape and very accomplished. And I just looked like a schlubby little loser sitting next to my wife compared to Nadal. But uh, we sit in our seats and Nadal comes out and she actually got like um, emotional. Like clap because she's, wow. she's never seen him in person. Oh, wow. Like tears? Yeah. Hmm. Like, because, like, we've paid to see uh, Federer here when he was in Toronto, yeah. like, three years ago. We've paid to see, we saw, I think, Sharapova. Like, so she really likes tennis. So this was a real nice thing that I got to do with my wife and for my wife through, obviously, the podcast or whatever. So thank you to that person that sent it out. But the thing that I thought was funny was we end up sitting next to this couple. It's this British guy named Ed and his wife, who, who was beautiful and nice, and they're a very kind couple. But Ed, like, had a couple drinks. And he sat down probably about like a couple matches into the Nadal thing. And so he hadn't been sitting there before. And he immediately starts trying to like make friends with people in his section. But the thing about tennis, if you guys have never been to a live tennis match, is when the tennis is on, you're not allowed to make a noise Mm. because it can distract the players. It's kind of like golf that way, where it's like once the match is engaged, people need to shut the fuck up. And honestly, when they're serving, sometimes before a serve, they'll go to throw and someone will be like, I love you, Nadal! Or like, go, Serena! And then the the line judge is like, thank you, thank you, be quiet. And they shut people down. And if you're too loud, you get booted. Wow. So when the actual like, ha! Ha! You know, like the actual match, you have to shut, you be quiet. But this guy, Ed, who I loved, is like this British older dude, literally just wants to chat. (laughs) So he like leans in and he's like in between one of the games and Danica's between us and he's leaning over my wife's pregnant belly. And he's like, uh, (laughs) he's like, all right, mate. He's like, "Uh, who do, uh, who do you know? He's like, I know the guy that like runs it. He's like, we sail together. He's like, what what part of the business are you in? And I like just kind of, I'm yes and dig. So I'm like, actually the two guys in the court right now playing, I'm like, I sold them their tennis rackets. And he's like, oh my God. I'm like, no, 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 I'm just fucking around. (laughs) Him and his wife like start laughing. And I guess right then, like Ed was on my side. Cause even though clearly Ed probably uh, is doing pretty well in this life. I think he liked that. I didn't really like care. And I was just joking with him. So then he keeps wanting to talk to me about like what I actually do. I'm like, oh, I work in TV. I'm like, I do this podcast. He's like, I love podcasts. And (laughs) and he's trying to make jokes. But Danica's in between us. And then Danica at one point leans to me and she goes, maybe you and Ed should go inside the box. (laughs) And I was like, that's a good call. I'm like, Ed, you want to go get a beer? He's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And he was like, he was double fisting. (laughs) And so like, he's basically neighbors with the guy that like, like, runs the box oh wow so he so basically we're hanging out we're making jokes i show him like uh the, a clip of the noel interview he's loving me he's making tennis jokes then we go back out and he's like i really want this to go uh three 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 sets because uh he's like the bar stays open it later if it goes three sets i'm like great <laughs> man so, after your own heart <laughs> honestly so we go back out it's the last set so they're stopped serving at this point but there's still a couple games left in the in the in the, in the match or whatever and Ed and I finish our beers and then Ed reaches under his seat and he pulls out a full red wine. And I was like, Ed, I was like, you old dog. And and Danica was like, you literally found like your old soulmate. And so Ed then like wants to exchange numbers with me. And this was literally the text that I got. So when we exchange numbers, I have him in as Ed and his last name, Rogers Cup. And so right before we went back and sat down, he goes, Ed here, let's sail or podcast. So he wants to bring me on his boat uh, or come on the podcast. (laughs) I haven't reached out to Ed since that time, but he was a great, great hang. And we watched Nadal win. And then two days later on the Sunday with Sid Crosby in attendance in our box seats, uh, Nadal won the Rogers Cup. Will you ever hang with him again? You know what? I, I, I text him. I, I don't mind moving in those circles. Dudes with a bit of money that like sailing. But when I was hanging with Bert, everyone was warning me to stay away. Well, the context is a little different. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, there's a difference between like buying your Tim Hortons and taking out on a sailboat and going to fancy tennis games. Yeah, I and guess. having showers with you and trying to take your shorts off. <laughs> <laughs> if that happens on the boat, then I'll be like, all right, Ed, this is something that I didn't know I, I was never took Bort, Bort shorts off. <laughs> <laughs> Bort. 
<laughs> Can I call Erica real quick and then I have to leave? Like, Do I'll it. Just... You got it. So Shane literally has to go and yeah. let some interns in. So I'll we, call we her keep, on we this. Keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep waxing. Let's so, do it. Um, Shane, though, could you step out of the studio if you're talking? Oh, I thought we'd put this because I'm telling her to wrangle the interns. Okay, okay let's sure. do it. Yeah. Uh, you could Lucy delete Lucy. it. You could keep no, it. No, it's good. <laughs> but I guess to wrap up, Rogers Cup was great. If we go again next year, we'll have to bring Shane. It's yet another edition of the free stuff we get. I know. Yeah. Hey. Hey, it's Shane. Yeah, what's up? I just, you're in the lobby, right? Yeah. I just need you to go to the parking lot entrance and wrangle the uh, finalists. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to come down there uh, right now and get them. But if you could just text me when they're all there and then I'll come down and just tell them I don't want to talk to them till they're in, <laughs> in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. This is a pretty good tease. This is a good I tease. feel like people listening are like, are, are people going to still hang around and listen to K Trev or are they going to jump ahead and then come back to K Trev? I don't know. A lot of drama could happen at this game show. A lot. Uh, yeah. I, we have no idea what's happening with this game show, by the way. We walked in this boardroom and there's just like four different pieces of paper crumpled up into a ball in front of chairs. Can like, you guess what those are? I know what they are because I was here when Shane said it. I up. have no idea. Those are buzzers. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would have guessed how, that. I don't know who'll know who hit it first. Uh, yeah. If it's by sound or by visual, but uh, this is. I will post some visuals so yeah. people who are hearing this, hopefully in the next day or two, will uh, have seen it. Shane, before uh, you leave, uh, we have one other thing in the opening uh, that you'd care about. I wanted to see this basketball game, Duke University, a big powerhouse basketball <laughs> school. You told me about this game, and uh, I couldn't make it because I was like, "This is the one night of the week that Lauren has off." We're going on a date night. So but I really regret it because it sounded like that <laughs> game was amazing. Though I did see eighth grade, which I highly That's recommend. That's on my list. Uh, I got to see that. Just to frame the Duke game for all of our, our listeners, everyone knows Duke University, Coach K. They brought their whole team here to Toronto to basically play the Ryerson, uh, is it Rams? Rams, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it would have been a cool game, but a lot of media was in town, and I was like, I mean, it turns out the game was sold out anyway. Yeah, it would have been so cool. We could have got tickets, though, probably. We probably could have made it. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of free things. But speaking of famous people, people shane have you been watching bachelor in paradise i have are, are you into it of course it's the best it's the best this is a show that lauren and i like to watch together bachelor in paradise i think it's you know what i was thinking about you mike because if i didn't know any of the characters on the show and i just like kind of walked into a living room that show was on <laughs> i'd be like this is the dumbest thing i've ever <laughs> seen i'm dumber for watching it but if you get into if you know the characters from previous seasons you really start to like like them or really hate them, and you feel like you really know them. So that's sort of like the appeal of these shows. Now, what, what's kind of a big deal is that there is a Canadian guy on the show. Ah. Yeah, and this guy, Kevin, is like, he kind of looks like a hunkier Tom Brady. He's a Canadian guy. He's got. He's not hunkier than Tom Brady. He's I mean, like the Neanderthal version. he's okay. According to Shane, he's a Neanderthal version of Tom Brady. But in any case, he's got this long hair. He's actually pretty nice on like and, and even though he kind of sounds stupid when he talks, he's actually decently insightful when it comes to, you know, his character on the show. Sure. Or at least who he is. As sounds a like you're a fan. Yeah, I kind of like him. And Lauren says that her friend Laura runs into him all the time at Liberty Village because he lives in Liberty Village. Oh. The guy has 200,000 Instagram followers. Oh, yeah. oh my god. And, and Laura Lauren's like, I can just imagine what it's like to be <laughs> that guy in downtown Toronto where every single young woman who is, who is like working and living in, in these condos watches the bachelor. Like, cause everyone, not to stereotype, but we all do guys, girls included. Sure, sure, sure. And he's just like, and he's now single. Cause he, even though he won the bachelor winter games, I think he, he won bachelor Canada, he won bachelor Canada, won bachelor winter games. There was no winner. Okay, never mind. I clearly know the rules of that one. But for our listeners, the reason you can't hear Shane is because he's just anxiously standing by the door because he's going to. I, I got grab... one more thing to say. This okay, story will yeah, take yeah, me yeah. like so one more. All the interns are scattered across the city. They're all. <laughs> <laughs> There's a what, bunch of interns running around the city. One more thing. So anyway, Lauren uh, wasn't on Instagram forever, and now she's on Instagram. She's, she's kind of like baby. loving Instagram. And oh she, no, no, he DM'd her. No, some other Bachelor Canada contestant DM'd her. Wow, being like, "Yo," and like responded to her story with some kind of like weird joke or whatever, or just kind of not weird, just kind of a dumb joke or whatever. 
And so anyway, just kind of was thinking about that. It's kind of funny how I could like see this guy, and she was like, "If you ever see Kevin, the guy on the Bachelor, you got to take a photo with him. The internet will love that." I was like, eh, "Maybe I'll do that." So my eyes are peeled for for Kevin. Anyway, she just got back from Europe. She was kind of going through my photos on my phone because she likes to have them on her phone, like just cute pictures of us and stuff like that. Anyway, when she was <laughs> gone in Europe, I was out for beers. I think with you, Mike one of the nights over at a King Taps, okay. a, a bar on the street. And this, this bartender dude comes up to me and he's like, oh yeah, the girl's here working here. Like, says you're in the Arkells. And I didn't realize that because I served you before. Do you remember this at all? I think you might be with Dan. I'm, okay, I forget who I was with. I was like, oh yeah. So I started making conversation with him. I'm like, oh, where are you from? He's like, I'm from Edmonton. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you know, I love Edmonton. I get my hair cut, actually. My favorite barber in, in the world is this guy who runs this Edmonton barbershop called Weekly. And he's like, that's where I get my haircut when I go back home. I'm like, do you know Craig? He's like, I know Craig. So I just take a selfie with him to send to Craig. Anyway, fast forward two weeks. Lauren's going through my phone. She's like, that's the Bachelor in Canada guy who DM'd me. The guy at King Taps? The guy who's a bartender at King Taps. He's a hipster dude, right? Seth, that guy. Is he hipster? Yeah. Kind of good looking? But then when he takes his off his shirt, he's really ripped. I wish I had that problem. Anyway, so she was just like kind of blown away. She's like, why the fuck did you have a picture with this guy? How did this even happen? And I explained, I was like, we have the same barber. Are you jealous? And the same taste in women, apparently. Yeah, yeah uh, no, I was actually, no, not, no. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Your story reminded me, I have a story about the nut and and Instagram followers. Okay. <laughs> but I feel like we, we have to maybe push that over to next week. Okay, we'll push it to next week. Because I feel like we need to set up K-Trip. Shane is literally running around a boardroom. Okay. If you're not excited, listeners, about this game show, how do you feel about how that went down? Do you feel like you were rushed? No, well, you know, these are extreme circumstances. And to be honest, with Shane out of the room, I'm kind of concerned that this... Uh, Contest is going to go on for like an hour and a half, and we're not going to be out of here until like nine o'clock. I'm like, good lord, this is what happens when you give them the keys, you know? <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Shane's going to listen back to that and be so furious. Oh, you're going to get an angry text. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding, Shane. I love you. All right, let's head up, K Trev. Today on the show, Maxi, yeah. we have K Trevor Wilson, yeah, who is uh, a great guy. Obviously, like we've had uh, Jared and Dale Z on the show, and I did the um. The Q&A sort of uh, live table read at JFL. Mm -hmm. Last year was that JFL, I think, with the cast of Letterkenny. Yep. So I'd met uh, K. Trevor Wilson at that, and he's a really, like, all those people on that cast, they're so nice and sweet and talented. And this interview took place at Just for Laughs. Um, we didn't get a lot of time because he was a busy boy. He literally had recorded his Netflix special the oh, night cool. before we talked, and then he had another show called Homegrown uh, that he was doing that night. And so I had maybe 15 minutes and he came and he sat down and I think in that time, you know, I got to know a lot about him. You know, he was an actor before he was a comedian and then he sort of became a comedian and then getting back into acting was the Letterkenny thing. And we get into all that and sort of how he got the show. And he recently uh, had a vocal surgery, which he talks oh, about cool. which, oh, as a comedian and I'm sure as a singer, Max, yeah. if you ever had to have like, you know something like that happen. Uh, and as you'll hear, it, it, it sounded like it could have been pretty severe. And um, yeah, I just thought it was an interesting conversation. And we got to uh, his performance on Jimmy Kimmel and how he got that gig. Have you seen him do stand-up before? Yeah, well, in my preparation for the interview. You know, I saw him do stand-up as part of the Letter Kenny tour. Oh, did you go to one of the live shows? Yeah, yeah. I nice. went to and it's always interesting, I find, when you see stand-up comedians who you only know as a character on a television show do their routine. Because... On the television show, they're playing a specific kind of character and they have to kind of stay to that, but it's not necessarily what their stand up persona is. Yeah. So there's definitely some similarities to who he is as a guy, but like, I think he grew up in Toronto. Like, he, like, in the. Oh, yeah, man. Like, he's like a Toronto. Because so, so, when you, my impression of him is like, oh, that guy probably grew up in Saskatchewan sure. or a small town, Ontario or whatever. Like a rural dude. Yeah, but he's not that at all. Anyway, I just thought that was an interesting kind of just observation where it's like, oh yeah, these guys, like when you see their stand-up versus who they are on television, it can be quite different and Absolutely. like a little jarring at first. But he slayed. Um, oh, he's great. He's a, he's an awesome stand-up. Did you right? watch his, his uh, Kimmel set? No. So you can find that online uh, and it's interesting just to watch him go on to Kimmel and do five minutes, you know? It's so how did it go? It's great. Yeah. And he talks all about how he got that gig, meeting Jimmy in Montreal just for laughs. Oh, killer. Yeah. Oh, that's Max, awesome. Max, I'm starting to suspect you haven't heard this interview yet. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the listeners. I am. I can't wait. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, have a listen to K. Trevor Wilson. Stick around for Shane's Crazy Dessert. Letter Kenny, of course, is on Crave TV here in Canada and now Hulu uh, in the States. It is critically acclaimed in Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, big things are happening for these guys, and it was a delight to sit down and talk to K. Trevor Wilson. So, if you were tuning in just just for K Trevor, and this maybe is your first time ever listening to our podcast, you can find us everywhere podcasts are found. SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, 
iTunes, YouTube, if you want to just sort of sit and listen at your desk. And now we are available on Spotify, which is a pretty big deal, Maxie. It's true. Actually, I'm a Spotify user myself. And I know um, sometimes navigating, if you're, I don't know, an iPhone person navigating the the podcast store can be sometimes a little tricky for some people, but uh, in Spotify, it's like all integrated with within the app. So it's super, super easy to find the podcast there. So if you have any friends that only know how to use Spotify and have never heard of podcasts before, they can just tell them, search Mike on Much in the Spotify app and all of our episodes are right there. It's really exciting. And also they've integrated it with Instagram stories. So we're able to post the Instagram, uh, the, the podcast to the Instagram story, swipe up and it's right there for you. I did. I did. I did uh, two shows. To, we're going to edit that into one special, and uh, I think it's going to be fun. That's a huge deal, man. It's nuts. Yeah. It's. Uh, I was saying someone today, like, I think just about everything I've ever done in my career, someone at one point told me was impossible <laughs> and never happens. And uh, so the fact that I got a Netflix special and I still haven't moved out of Canada breaks all the rules of entertainment <laughs> totally man well i guess i, I kind of want to walk through that like that feeling so like you've been doing stand-up a long time and yeah I, I mean however you define success or whatever i'm always fascinated by with any creatives um and it is such a, a sort of hard business to succeed at as you've gotten to different levels and sort of seen growth when you find out you have a netflix special like obviously it starts with talks or or, or maybe you reach out or maybe they reach out what was the feeling? Were you like, shit, like this is really happening? Are you nervous or are you confident because of all the work you put in? This is actually like a really weird experience because I uh, I just had uh, laser surgery on my vocal cords. Wow. Uh, a little under three weeks ago. Uh, so uh, when, when I, when they asked me to do Just for Laughs this year, they just asked me to, to do Homegrown. So that was, I was just coming in to host the show tonight. Uh, and, um, so I needed to have this, uh, vocal cord procedure done. Uh, I had an inflammation on my vocal cord. My doctor wanted to biopsy it to make sure it wasn't cancerous. And then she said, you know, while we're in there, I can take a laser and return your vocal cords to normal, uh, through laser surgery. And, uh, the, um, the best time to do it was July because I had the least going on. I, I, I had homegrown at the very end of the month so I could do this procedure at the beginning, have my recovery time. And, uh, and, and, you know, then I only had to do 10 minutes of, of jokes and I, I should be good. And so I booked this surgery and had everything set up and was working on homegrown. And then I got a call from my agent saying I've been offered a half hour Netflix special. And it was like, fuck, <laughs> like, this is great, but I don't know how I'm going to sound on Netflix. Cause I've just, I'm like, because I've booked surgery. I'm going to have a fucking laser in my neck, you know, two weeks before this. So there was actually like a lot of stress of, will I be able, will I have my voice back in time of course. to do the show? So I was, Did you I think actually, about canceling the surgery? Uh, I, I thought about it. I, I thought, but then like, I didn't know when else I'd be able to have it. And uh, I, I was tired of walking around, not knowing if I had throat cancer, Of course, which I don't, which is very nice to know. That's um, wonderful to hear. Yeah. It was a lot of stress going into it. I actually, uh, like I had my follow up on Monday just before coming up here with my ENT specialist. She prescribed me steroids. So I actually was on steroids You're juiced, for my man. vocal cords so I could be better at comedy, which I think I'm the first person <laughs> in the history of comedy to juice <laughs> for joke telling, <laughs> to start a cycle so I could get better at telling jokes. Uh, yeah, so that, that was, it was, it was super stressful this whole two week period, like leading up to it. Because, like, you know, for uh, two weeks ago, I couldn't talk. I literally, I couldn't speak above a whisper. I had downloaded an app on my phone so I could type and talk to my girlfriend. I'd do wow. speech through text. And, uh, like, I was, I was a dime store fucking Stephen Hawking for a week. <laughs> the only voice I could download was the GPS lady. <laughs> It's just, it just if you'd listen to our car conversations, it just sounded like my girlfriend was arguing with Siri for a week. <laughs> I mean, that kind of, and then I guess the good thing, or I guess if there is a good thing to take out of it, is whenever something like that is extremely stressful leading up to this sort of pinnacle, which is the special that you taped last night and then Homegrown tonight, do you feel like, 
wow, the fucking the voice came together. We taped the show. It's good. It's almost more cathartic because of the drama leading up to the moment. It was uh, it, well, the one thing that I, uh, it forced me to do, um, which kind of took me back to uh, sort of like my the, my old days of doing stand up is I had to slow everything down mm. and and uh, really reserve my voice, uh, and uh, it sort of returned me to my my old pacing of really taking my time with every joke and uh, not trying to rush through the bits to get to cram more humor into a, an amount of time, but rather to just let the bits hang out there, let everything have a life. And uh, comedy's about laughter, but it's not about, you know, it, you don't have to be, people don't always have to be laughing. Right. Sometimes it's really great when they're listening. And it, I was speaking softer, so it forced the audience to be more quiet so there were great moments shooting the special last night where it was just completely silent. And uh, it, it sounds weird in comedy to be like, but when they're quiet because you want them to be quiet, that's a magical moment in a performance. When there is not a sound in that room, that is pretty incredible to get a whole bunch of people to shut up at the same time without doing, without say, telling them to. They just want to listen. Well, you know they're with you. That's when you know you've got a room listening to you. Yeah. Well, going back a bit, I mean, what was your impetus to get into comedy? Are you somebody that grew up loving stand-ups or watching the specials? Like, at what point do you go, I'm going to try and make a fucking career out of this? Because it is such, such a hard thing to be successful at. I told people this a lot. I was seven years old and watching Uncle Buck, and <laughs> I, I figured out for the first time that that was his job, that that was John Candy's job. You contextualize it that like way. I, I understood that John Candy was not Uncle Buck because I, I, I knew who John Candy was. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. Like, why does he do this? Why is he always playing different people and things? And I was like, oh, my God, this, this is his job. And I'm like, because, you know, when, I was, when you're a little kid, you only think a job is whatever your, your parent does. Absolutely. Like, you, my, a job, and you don't know what your parents do, but you know they go to work. <laughs> And that work is always going to work. And then... And it looks a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put on a suit and you go to work. Yeah. That's what, and then it's like, no, you sometimes work can be being funny and pretending to be silly. And I was like, well, that's a way better job. Like, my dad's office <laughs> is boring. This has got to be way better. So I, I was like, I think I want to do that. And then I, it was just, you know, every time I did a class presentation, it was like a skit. Yeah, you know, every, it was it's an a, opportunity for you to yeah, be creative. Yeah, it was just, you know, I, and I, I absorbed stand-up. I, 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 you know, any weekend I could stay up late and watch, you know, talk shows and see the, see the stand-up. Or, you know, when I was a kid, uh, there was a ton of A&E, had a ton of stand-up. You had Caroline's Comedy Hour, Absolutely. Comedy on the Road with uh, John Biner, uh, Evening at the Improv. Evening at the Improv. And, and, and then sometimes, you know, I stay up and watch Saturday Night Live and they do the HBO stand up specials on Global afterwards. So, like, the weekends is when I'd stay up all night and just absorb comedy. And uh, I was in sixth grade, and uh, one of my teachers got me involved in the school play. Uh, so, I was like, till, still too shy to embarrass at that point. Mm. So, I'd never gone out for the school play. So, she talked to the director of the school play. They got me involved as the script prompter and male understudy. And I was working closely with the director, of, who was an actual Shakespearean actor, Roger Barton. And he talked to my parents and got me into acting classes at Young People's Theater. And uh, from there, I, I uh, um, auditioned and got into Etobicoke School of the Arts. And then uh, my buddy Matt Park and I um, signed up for improv classes at Second City. Yeah. At one point, we were the youngest people to ever study improv at the Second City. How old were you? I was 14, and wow. they didn't have child and youth courses at that time. It was all adult classes. So were you with the adults? So it was, yeah, so it was me and Matt, and like the closest person to our age group was uh, my friend Maeve O'Grady, who was like 19 at the time. Right. But uh, yeah, we were the youngest two people to ever take improv classes from Second City. Now they have like youth and child of course. courses. Did there, you take to it? Did you find it difficult? Yeah, no, I thought it was great. Right. And, and our teachers were all blown away that we were 14. Right. They were like, I remember Al Catlin, my first improv teacher, was like, I would never have had the balls to do this when I was sure. your age. And uh, 14 is when I you know, got my agent and uh, started uh, doing this professionally. And uh, it was after I finished uh, Topico School of the Arts, I went to Humber for comedy, started doing stand up that year. And yeah, it's now been 18 years of stand up. Uh, I think I did the math. I've been with my agent, Mary 
since the start of my acting career, and we just hit, uh, I think, 23 years working together. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> 23 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> well, that's interesting to me. So getting to something like Letterkenny, which is very visible, and even acting, the, the sort of delineation between acting and stand-up, do you consider yourself an actor first? I used to, but uh, years ago I realized I was a comedian. Interesting. The last time I did a play, I realized my, my wiring was different from all the other actors now. Because when you're a comedian, you're ready to go at the drop of a hat. You're on. You're ready to be on. Most comedians, there's very little difference between who they are off stage and who they are on. It's just uh, an exaggeration of of yourself. So, uh, I, as I find when hanging out with other stand-ups, we're always riffing, we're always going, we're always ready, and the actors were always in their heads and freaking themselves out, right. and overthinking every choice they made. And uh, comedian, you just you just do it, and if it sucks, whatever. You got another show tomorrow. Like, you don't spend too much time worrying about what's going to happen right now. And I, the very moment I realized I was a comedian is we were backstage before the first show of this play, and I was drinking bourbon and um, watching one of the actors freak out. She's just having a meltdown. Like, I can't remember any of my lines. I can't remember any of my lines. And I just went, shut up. Yes, you can. Like, you're a professional. They hired you for a reason. You know exactly what you're doing. You're going to walk out on that stage, and you're going to do your job, and it's going to go great. You're just freaking yourself out for no reason, so shut up. <laughs> How did you take to that? She shut up, and she went out there, and she did all of her lines, and <laughs> afterwards she thanked me. <laughs> but, but I just had no patience to watch someone have a meltdown. It's like... And get in their own head. Yeah, and quit reactive. being dramatic. So, so you get... Um, so I want to get to a couple of things. So you get Letter Kenny. Uh, does that feel like sort of a, a big win, like a big break at the time? Letter Kenny was huge. Yeah. Um, like uh, it was. I, I was a fan of the of the web series with Letter Kenny. So when it was becoming a show, I was like, oh, I, I want to be involved in this. And, and when, did you know those guys? Did I didn't Jared? know them beforehand. I knew New Metric. Gotcha. I knew the producers. Uh, I'd, I'd already pitched. A couple shows to them, they'd approach me at Just for Laughs uh, to write a, a series based on my stand-up. And I'd already pitched them a couple shows. And when Letter Kenny came up and the audition came across my plate, I was like, I want this. Like, I, I actually, you know, there's some jobs you get sent to you, you you're like, I'm, I'll go. It'll pay if the I get it, great. If not, who cares? But this one I wanted. Like, I put the work in on Letter Kenny. And I, like, I watched Jared and Nate's uh, performances. I matched their cadence. You know, I, I, I did whatever I could to fit into that equation. And uh, and I, I now know the full story of how I got the job, and it's too long to get into now. But uh, I did what they liked, and I, I gave them something they they, they needed, and uh, they brought me onto the show. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, it really felt like, because I had to put the acting on the back burner for the stand-up a long time ago. Yeah. I had to pick one to focus on. And so I'd always promised my agent that, it would pay off. Like the stand up would feed the acting somehow. And then we got Letter Kenny essentially based on me being the strength of my stand up. And uh, and so it was like, yeah, this is this has come full circle. We're we wanted to be an actor and we took the weirdest, longest way to get there. And we're back here and now finally after all this time, we've landed on a TV show and it just happened to be like the biggest <laughs> cultural phenomenon TV show that this country's put out in quite some time. Fuck yeah. And, uh, you know, that was the part we didn't expect. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, lastly, as, as we're getting the wrap it up sign, I wanted to ask about uh, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, which is obviously a huge deal, I imagine. Anytime some, you know, when you see success in the States, you're able to do something like that. Is there anything you can tell us about that experience? That I met Jimmy surprised? here. You did? I did? met Jimmy just for last. Is that, that how you got that game? That all came from Roast Battles. Jimmy was one of the judges, and I was on the show, and after the, he judged my battle with Tony Hinchcliffe, and after the battle, I was coming out of the, the bathroom in Lestral up at the party, uh, I'd just taken a shit, and I walked out of the stall, and Jimmy was coming in with his cousin Sal to take a piss, and Jimmy started up a conversation with me, and... I was like, fuck, I don't want to do this now, but when else am I going to do this? So I had an awkward conversation with Jimmy Kimmel while he had his dick in his hand, <laughs> and I was hoping no one realized I just wrecked that toilet. 
we had about like a 15 minute chat in the bathroom and then uh the next day one of his producers tracked me down at a party and uh invited me to do the show do you think if you don't take that shit at that moment and run into jimmy that you still get the show i don't know if i would have gotten the show if i didn't take that shit that might have been the most important shit of my career it could have been and I just did uh, a half hour on shitting off of my Netflix special, so that shit didn't even make the shit set. But that was an important shit. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you for having me. I've written this out for you, Mike, because you're going to be like the host. Oh, <laughs> fitting. <laughs> So, so for our listeners, Max and I don't know what's much like the intern uh, hopefuls here. Max and I don't know what's going on either. Where did the plaque go? I hit it. I didn't know if you wanted to do a reveal. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> but uh, here's the plaque. Who's producing so this, this fucking thing? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> we were talking in the open. Snort. I don't know where that photo is from. Yeah. And why He's wearing a top off. hat. <laughs> yes. When I called, I accidentally called Veronique, who's one of the contestants. Because I thought she was the number of the trophy place because, <laughs> <laughs> because her number starts with 888, which is very rare. And the trophy number is a 188 number uh, also. Right. And I have to dial one before I dial out. Anyways, it was a whole fiasco. But yeah. Okay, Someone will so be I, going home with this very exclusive <laughs> and flattering photo of Max in a top hat. Oh, I know where, <laughs> you know, I know where this picture's from. It's, um, I did a very stupid... Uh, Christmas shoot with J.R. Diggs <laughs> to promote the Hamilton <laughs> charity concert and the guy and J.R. wears those kinds of hats and he was like Max take a couple pictures with my cool top hat because this is, looks cool and I was like okay and there it is so you actually wear that it's not photoshopped <laughs> no you're right uh, I know I know That's Rich amazing. Yeah, I like Rich's uh <laughs> Scores one with a joke yeah, there. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> Taking the piss out of Max. You're going to be the host, Mike. <laughs> Great. Should I intro it like we normally, like welcome to the dessert? Or should I just read your copy? Just, I want you to be really like a game show host okay. here. All right. <laughs> I've never read this. I'm being handed it for the first time, as the interns and Max can see. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going for this, right? Yes. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Mike Veerman, and welcome to the very first Shane's Digital Dessert Intern Contest. We have narrowed down the submissions to four finalists who are with us today, but there can only be one digital dessert winner, and that will be decided by 22 questions 22. <laughs> that Shane came up with only moments ago. That's right, 22 questions that will determine your fate and give you the opportunity to meet celebrities and get pictures of them for Instagram. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the winner will also get a signed picture of Max. And speak of the devil, Max is here with us today, and he will be the buzzer judge for when people buzz in if they know the answer to one of the questions. That's right. See those crumpled pieces of paper in front of you, contestants? That will act as a buzzer. So hit the paper when you know an answer, but only if it's during a buzzer section. But don't worry about that for now, because the first part is open-ended questions. But before that, let's get to know the contestants. All righty. Rich. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I am originally from Calgary, so I'm from the west side. I am a music lover, also a singer, um, and I love to travel, and I also, hmm, what else about me? Um, I was a swimmer for a lot of my I'm getting years. the cut it off sign from Shane, so we are going to move. Our producer has piped in, but it sounds lovely. Thank Calgary's you. a great place. We are moving on to Justice. Justice, tell us something about yourself. Thank you so much. Hi, um, my name's Justice, and I got mugged last week, which, yeah, is the most interesting thing about me right now. Um, I was cleaning my back seat in the parking lot of a subway in Brampton, and which was my first mistake, I know. And this, how do I put this nicely? Um, this, like, meth connoisseur slid into my front seat while I was in the back seat and basically told me that if me and my buddy didn't get out and give him money, we were going to die. Whoa. So I just told him I had never seen a bank before. And um, and then my friend was just like, okay, I'll give you whatever money. So they went into the ATM in the subway where the subway guy was watching. And he mugged my friend. He took $40 from my friend's bank account and then threw, like, $7 in change on the ground as, like, a distraction before he ran away. Oh, wow. And that's... That's who I am right now. <laughs> that was a wonderful story, although a bit of a bummer. <laughs> Brandon, tell us something about yourself. All right, so my name's Brandon from Montreal. Moved here a year ago. Uh, big sports fan, music fan, entertainment fan, everything. Pretty much 
Literally everything. I like rich. I used to love to travel, but then I wasted all my money traveling, so I no longer leave the province. It's been two years. It's kind of sad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's me. Thank you. Hopefully, you get some more money. You can do some more traveling. Is it Veronique? Yes. Wonderful pronunciation, Veronique. Tell us about yourself. Hi, um, I do two things with my life. I take pictures of bands. I'm a concert photographer. I also take pictures of bones. I'm an x-ray technologist. Uh, a fun thing about me is that seven years ago to this day was the first and only time I've ever been in the Much Music building. So I'm happy to be back. Thank you, Facebook Memories, for reminding me of that. <laughs> that was a really tight delivery. All right, now it's time for the first round of questions. The first digital dessert is going to be this Tuesday with Hayden Christensen. You may know him. He played uh, Darth Vader. I, I haven't seen the movie. No, but me neither. That is correct. He's he played kind of a teenage hunk. So my first question is, are you available Tuesday at 145 <laughs> for a Hayden Christensen interview? I am going to always be available for Hayden Christensen. <laughs> okay. I need my pen because that's one point. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's something you're going to remember. Over to you, Justice. Yeah, I'm available on Tuesday for anything, Hayden Christensen or otherwise. <laughs> okay. Justice. <laughs> Brando? I am definitely available. I don't really do much these days. I, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. And actually, Jumper is one of my favorite movies, which he was in. Really sick movie. So that'd be really dope. Whew, that was pretty good. Veronique? Yep, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Question number two uh, How much money would you be expected to make in this? We'll start with Veronique. Zero dollars? Okay. Uh, Brandon. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with zero also. Okay. Uh, Justice. The experience is worth a lot of money. Oh, fuck. That's a good answer. Uh, Rich. I think this experience is priceless. I like that. Okay. What would you do if you saw that one of the cameras wasn't recording during a digital dessert? We'll start with you, Rich. If it wasn't recording, um, I would definitely want to... Find another camera. Justice. I, I would press record. Justice got that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brandon? Um, I mean, it probably wouldn't be not recording in the first place. It's happened. Start. Yeah? I yeah. Never would, I don't know. Maybe, it's happened. Yeah? You haven't been listening to the pod. That's what started this whole contest. In fact. Oh, yeah? Yes. Wow, that is terrible. <laughs> so what, what would you do? I would record with my phone and try to fix it. Veronique. <laughs> I would turn it back on. <laughs> Slash press record. Nah, too late, too <laughs> late, too <laughs> late. Okay, question number four. If all three cameras shut down at the same time, which camera do you worry about first? The wide shot, the close-up of Shane, or the close-up of the guest? Veronique. The wide shot. Okay. Definitely the wide shot. Okay. I'm also for the wide shot. Okay. I might have to say the close-up of Shane because it's Shane's show, right? Uh, you can't point, have the show without point. Shane. I can't see you if I'm actually marking something down or not. <laughs> Question number five. What is your favorite digital dessert and why? Uh, probably the one with Classified because Shane got to rap. And that alone, I think, just makes it the winner. And uh, Justice? Um, the one with Dashboard Confessional because it really inspired me to be able to make somebody that uncomfortable like in my own life. <laughs> Brandon. I really like the Jersey Shore one with Vinny and I always forget her other name. Dina? Is that her name? That Dina? Is, yeah. Yes. Uh, that one is really funny. You were funny. They were funny. Good good conversation in that one. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say Chris Carabo as well, but um, I, I really like the Reclaws one. As much as that joke was like, shouldn't have happened, it happened anyway and it was great. Well, uh, which joke were you referring to? Calling them lovers. Right. Because they are <laughs> siblings. Right. If I was ever to ask you to appear on camera or be in a bit, what would you say? I'm down. Okay. Brandon? 100%. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay, and you, Rich? Of course, absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> Do you know how to set up a tripod? Yes, I do. And, and how long would you say that would take you? Um, I'd say probably maybe five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Okay, what about you, Justice? Um, I do know how to set up a tripod. I could probably do it in about a minute, but I got really stupid hands. So okay. We'll see. Yeah, uh, I'd say under two minutes. I don't want to put too under much pressure two minutes? on myself. But 
Yeah. Franny? Yes. Are we talking just like a basic tripod? Just the tripod okay. over there. Probably like 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Wow. Would anyone, keep in mind, if you do not make your time that you said, you will be deducted a point. But if you get it right, you will get two points. Wow. So is anyone willing to set up a tripod here right now? You said 30 seconds. Yeah. Wow. I got my eye on it. Okay. I it. I'm going to get out my timer. Here we go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is interesting. Three, two, one. All right. For our listeners, she's pulling one of the legs down. Okay. Yeah. Oh, she's setting it very high. She's going damn quick. All right. She's got the other leg down. She's got it open. She's good. She's got the third one. Here we uh, go. You have 15 seconds left. Sweet. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's leveling out the uh, the plate that the camera would go on. Five, four. Is it set up? Yeah. Are you done? I think she's done. Okay, let me just inspect that. <laughs> Shane is going to inspect the tripod work. Okay, that was good. Okay. What is your least favorite part of the digital dessert, and how could I improve? Is the mic moving, or is it staying with Veronique? It's uh, staying with Veronique. Not having the cameras work, and so you should hire an intern? Ooh. That's, that's a pretty yeah, good answer. That's excellent. Okay. Might be an unpopular opinion. I don't, I don't know. But the dance-off at the end, I find it, <laughs> <laughs> I find it awkward personally sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> a legit but, answer. No. <laughs> that, you asked for it, Shane. Brandon, you are getting a point for this, but that's that is kind of the point. Of yeah. Shane it. gets your eye rate. <laughs> no, no, it is to I, be awkward. Yes. You get that it's. I know. I trust me. I'm a, I'm an awkward guy often, so like, I, I know awkward moments. Right, right, but you don't see the humor in that. I do sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't work. I think like depending on the guest. Type True, thing. but you got to take a risk sometimes, right? Yeah, but calculated <laughs> risk. It is a calculated risk. Every what, time. What would, you, what would you say the percentage of it pay, <laughs> paying time. off to when it doesn't? Like, what would be an example of it paying off, and what would be an example of it not paying off? Or has it yet to pay I off? Guess, I guess, yeah, you don't really lose anything by it not paying off. So, yeah, I get, you might be right, actually. Yeah. Uh, Justice? Um, this is actually really hard because I, even when stuff doesn't necessarily land, I still think it's great because it just feeds into that really awkward atmosphere. And I'm uncomfortable just all the time when I'm watching them, and there's so far nothing that hasn't, really struck that nerve. I really like it. What do you think landed the least of, of, of anyone I did, if you could say? The, oh, I don't even remember the name of the guest, but the, the fart button, was that what it was? Yes. Yeah, I thought that was kind TJ of- TJ Miller. Yeah, yeah. That was the least, I think, like, because I could, you could see what was going on. Yeah, Rich is nodding, but uh, okay, Rich, Rich, what would you say? You know what? I'm going to challenge Brandon and say that we need more of the dancing section and it should be extended <laughs> because it's so jiffable. <laughs> I like that. And uh, wait, is it called a GIF or a GIF? I call it a GIF. But it's called a GIF, though. You're right. I, you I are call right. it GIF. Most um, people say it incorrectly, but you are right. Did yeah. he get an extra point for saying GIF? No, no, correctly? no. I'm not just throwing around points like that. <laughs> I also like that he attacked a fellow contestant. This is very uh, reality show. I would say challenge. Sorry, my bad. Attack is a strong word. Okay. I don't want to be the drama causer. You have tickets for an Arkell show, <laughs> but at last minute, a digital dessert pops up <laughs> with Simple Plan. What do you do? What if I merged the two? What if I did a simple plan interview at the concert? Okay. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good answer. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just bailing. Like, I'm coming to the, the digital dessert because, like, this is an opportunity. Brando. I just hand the tickets off to a friend, tell them to go, come help you out. I've seen you a few times. No offense. You've seen Max a few times in concert. Okay. Veronique. I have also seen the Arkells uh, enough, probably. Um, and Simple Plan is unfortunately one of my favorite bands, so I would definitely do the Simple Plan thing. What What is enough, by the way? Se 17 times? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. A lot of them were free. So we're, we're going to start with Veronique. Uh, you see Max, Mike, and I walking down the street. You only have time to stop and ask one for an autograph. <laughs> Who do you ask? Uh, um, I'm Shane. Shane. I'm going to go with Shane. <laughs> That's a pretty smart answer. <laughs> All right. I'd probably go with Mike. Wow. I feel like it's the rarest of the three to get your hand. I, I could find your signatures. Maybe. Maybe. Right. You. <laughs> and Justice. Um, I have to pick Shane as well because I have a couple from Max and my roommate has one from Mike from the San Sebastian days. Wow. So, oh. Deep cut. Good That's, uh, I'm going for you. 
Um, I'm probably going to say Shane, but then also maybe get your number and then we'll hang out and then I'll get to know the rest. All right. Interesting. Okay. Ambitious. The correct answer there was Mike, because I don't want someone who's so much of a fan they're in awe of me. And I really, <laughs> and I really hate when people use me for Max, like, to, you know what I mean? Like they want to be the intern winner, but really they're just a fan of the Arkells. So Mike would be the perfect level of me being comfortable with you. <laughs> <laughs> this one's the last of the open-ended questions. Is MacGruber a quality comedic film or a piece of shit? Starting with Rich. I haven't seen it, honestly. So <laughs> I'll just go with it being a piece of shit. Okay. Justice. I also haven't seen it, um, but like I've heard good things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that it's all right. Brando. I'm also ashamed to say I haven't seen it. And I don't usually like to talk about movies that I haven't seen. So I don't Good know. answer. Good answer. I haven't seen it either. So wow. no opinion. Oh, Sorry. For four. Shane, what do you think of McGruber? It's the best movie ever made. Yeah. Not, no one got a point there. And now, the buzzer selection. Is that what I was supposed to say? The buzzer section. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's your handwriting. <laughs> I know. It's no good. And now, the buzzer section. Okay, so this is the buzzer section. Uh, Max is going to be the judge. Uh, so when I, if you know an answer to the question, just hit the buzzer. Who was the guest on the very first digital dessert? Don't all buzz in at once. I couldn't even tell you that to be honest. I could. Oh, Veronique. I can't remember his name, but was it that basketball person? Some Somebody that had to do with basketball? That is not correct. Oh. Erica, do you know? Was it at Coachella? Yeah, Melissa Merck, who almost <laughs> ruined my marriage. <laughs> I would have also accepted Max Kerman because he was when I was testing out wow. doing digital dessert. It's a deep style. cut. Okay, and by the way, from now on, if you get it wrong, I'm actually going to deduct a point. I meant to mention that at the top. No one loses a point for getting it wrong there, though. No one loses. Because you didn't know that before. Yeah. For our listeners, okay. if you saw their faces, they all were very uh, shocked. Which hilarious noise-making device did I use in the TJ Miller <laughs> episode? Justice got it. It's a fart button. Fart button. It's a fart button. It, it, it was, yep. Yeah. I accept fart. You accept fart button? Of course. Uh, when you guys, once Max decides who won, then wait till you get the mic. Okay. Cool. So just, so we can get that take, just say fart button again. <laughs> fart button? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> okay, question number 15. In the Jersey Shore digital dessert, what was one of the names that I suggested Ronnie name his child? Rich. Uh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. wait Rich, you going to get the microphone? microphone? Um, yeah. Sorry. Vinny, name his child? No, Ronnie. Ronnie. Um, sorry. Um, um, oh my God, I just blanked. This is so bad. Three, two, one. Oh God, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh heartbreaker. Want to no. on that? Heartbreaker. Nobody buzzing in? Erica, do you know? Okay, the answer was Jelmo or Scoochie. <laughs> and I would have given a bonus point if you had known both of those, by the way. So does Rich lose a point? Yes, Rich did lose a point. It's a cold Damn. world, man. Damn, okay. Yeah. Question number 16. According to Dan Televesky, how big <laughs> is his penis? I'm just going to guess and say he said it was enormous. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> wow. Yes. Wow. He redeemed himself. Was that a guess? Yeah, Maybe I was just posing it as a guess. He didn't use the word enormous, but he just said it was very large. Yeah. Um, he looks like he'd be large. Okay. <laughs> what procedure did I want to get done so I could resemble Max Schneider? Nose job. Correct. Excellent. Actually, I think it was several nose jobs that you said. It was. That was good. Uh, Man, Rich coming from behind. In that <laughs> Who did Max Schneider say I had a nose like? His dad. Correct. Wow, you really love that Max one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Question number 19. In the digital dessert with dashboard confessionals Chris Caraba, what did he blame his ridiculous V-neck on? Justice got it. He only brought one shirt, and he was traveling and touring and sweating a lot, so it just kept drooping and drooping and drooping. That's close. I'm not going to take a point away, but I'm also not going to give it to you because you were close, but it would be unfair to take a point away. Anyone else? Veronique. Is it just that it was a crew neck and he only packs a backpack and so he only has one shirt and by wearing it every day, it drooped? I'm not going to take a point away there no. either. What the answer is his backpack was stretching it out. 
The right. backpack was actually to blame. No one gained a point. No one lost a point because that would that would be unfair. Fair. Okay. Number twenty. Which Friends star did Nick Stauskas say he would fornicate with in the game <laughs> Mary Fuck Kill? Uh, hand the mic. Rich. Rich. Joey Tribbiani. That is correct. <laughs> wow. Good, good memory. Who won the arm wrestling competition in the Rec Laws Digital uh, Dessert? She uh, did. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, what? Sorry, I think, I think, I think this is a judge moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you Veronica, gotta wait. You Veronica gotta wait. Got and let's pass the mic to you. Hit it, you hit it a little harder, but Veronica, I think, was hitting it oh, before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Shane did. That's correct. <laughs> And just no, no for bonus, but who was I facing off in that one? The girl. I forget her name. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you could just... Oh, sorry. Is this my moment? Yeah. Do you want me to keep doing the voice? Yeah, yeah. I almost forgot. There's one multiple choice question. Which of these actors do you think you'd get along with the most? Owen Wilson, Timothy Chalamet, or Jack Nicholson? Uh, fuck Sorry, uh, I forgot to mention everyone gets a chance. To okay, oh. yeah, Max, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ver- Max wasn't paying attention. You have one job, Max. Fuck. Uh, Veronique. Probably Owen Wilson because I think he's hilarious. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Brandon. Brandon. 100% Owen Wilson because I say wow an excessive amount of times. So once <laughs> those like memes started coming out, I just get tagged in them like, well, not anymore, but like three times a day. And I just wow. Very, very often. I like it. Oh, Justice. Um, Jack Nicholson. I think he might be the only person who could like out crazy me. <laughs> I like that. I'm rich. I'm going to have to say Owen Wilson, but circa Wedding Crashers before they're kind of depressed Owen Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> the funny one. Wow. The correct answer was Owen Wilson. Now I'm just going to tabulate the votes in the other room. You can uh, mingle and then I'll come in and present it. Like you mean tabulate the points? The points. Right. Yeah, sorry. I'm the votes. Survivor on the brain. And I'm going to come back and uh, throw in the winner. Wow. This is exciting. <laughs> so thank you guys all for coming out, by yeah. the way. Thank you. I know we're all having having a laugh and Shane set this awesome contest up, but uh, oh, sorry. I thought Shane was... Br- okay, so for our listeners, I, I, like a, um, a maintenance person just came up to the boardroom, but they were rolling a cart, and I thought Shane had a cart full of prizes, <laughs> and then he opened the door, and it, it was, was janitorial equipment. Yeah. That was... Um, I think that was the same guy in the episode where <laughs> Shane was telling us about how his unborn baby might be... Might have issues. Might have issues so and he w- unwell, and like Shane was... Like telling us, this, and like we were sitting on that side. Shane of the table. was there, and then we were there, and then Shane was telling us about how his baby might have. Shane's and crying. And anyway. That, oh geez. That, oh <laughs> hold on, hold on. Shane has Shane has returned to the room for our listeners. He looked at me and he says, "Oh wow." Oh. Wilson. Who do you guys think won? It's very close. <laughs> Brandon said we all won, which is okay. Great so, Brandon, nine points. Rich. Nine points. Justice, nine points. And the winner of Shane's Digital Dessert Intern Contest, Bronny, with 11 wow. points. There you go. Wow. Play the music. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm super pumped. I'm very excited to have this ridiculous picture of Vax. Uh, this is going to be a good time. And do you know what won it for you? What's that? Is the tri- it the tripod? It was the tripod. You won by two points. Otherwise, wow. it would have been a four-way tie. Imagine. What would you have done if it would have been a four-way tie? I don't know. I was actually having a mini panic attack out there. <laughs> As Erica Waltese, I was like, nine, nine, nine. And you were the last one I tabulated. But excellent job. I want to thank everyone for actually coming out. I know it's sometimes hard to commute only to lose a game show, but... <laughs> Hopefully this gives you some sort of exposure. Like, is there any social media you'd like to promote or uh, businesses? Um, I don't have a business, um, but I guess my, ins- no, I don't even want to shout it out. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, I do stand up occasionally, so keep an eye out for me. Um, I'll be around doing the like small clubs. So. J- Justice, full name? Do you have, Justice Hargrove. Do you have just social media, Twitter, Instagram, anything like that you want people to? You did Am have I the best submission video. Am I allowed to say video. my Twitter? Hell yes. Yeah, yeah, say anything um, you want. So at fuck underscore four underscore justice is my Twitter. <laughs> I like that. I like it. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. Um, and yeah, so if I do shows, I'll be posting um, about that through my Twitter. 
Wicked. And Rich, you kind of snuck in under the radar. People don't know this, but we had a lot of dropouts once we actually explained the details of the contest and that people wouldn't be getting any money or really any (laughs) benefits to this. So you got in through just sending me a resume and you came here just because you were willing to make it out today. Right. Yeah, I actually had no idea what was happening today. So this was completely just brand new to me. Had you, you listened di- to the pod before? I was just out of curiosity. Um, you can I be had honest listened now. to the podcast before a couple times because my friend does. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hadn't listened to Digital Desserts. Right. Um, but you did this. your homework, clearly, because you came out of nowhere with very obscure digital dessert knowledge. Well, you know, you had good content. Thank you. I wouldn't have watched, kept watching if it wasn't interesting. Thank so. you. And what's your social media and what would you like to promote? Um, my Instagram is Rich Luyen. That's spelled R-I-C-H-L-U-Y-E-N. And uh, yeah, follow me for some good pictures. Nice. <laughs> okay. PG pictures. All right. You no have, one, no you have one another account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Let's assume that. Good pictures are different to different people. Rich, do you do anything? Do you sing? Do you act? Is there anything else that you want to promote? Or? Um, I do sing. I don't have any music out yet right now. Okay. I'm working on some music, but if anyone wants to collaborate, could we I'm hear on a YouTube channel? Just to end it, well, let's get a sample of your singing voice and feature you. Okay. Um, ooh, what do I sing? Let's see. Um, let me do a Whitney Houston song. Yeah. And I will always love you. Who I will always love you. That's it. That's all. That's our episode. Thank you so much to K. Trevor Wilson for coming on and being a guest. And thank you so, so, so damn much to Rich, Justice, Brandon, and Veronique, who we're going to be seeing a lot more of, I think, going forward. Yep. The Mike on Much podcast can be found online on Twitter and Instagram at Mike on Much. Subscribe to the show. You can listen to it on Spotify now. Huge thank you to Jenna Gregory and Tara Paquette for putting together the artwork. As always, the patron saint of the pod, Justin Stockman, Webby D, Manager Ash, Sarah McLaren, the whole gang here at Bell Media. The Michael Much Podcast is produced by Max Kerman. I'm your host, Mike Veerman. See you next week if we don't die on the weekend.